Okay, we want to pick up where we left off with the isotopes and talk a little bit about radioactive decay. So let's start from this slide. Uh, quick review. Uh, when you look on the periodic table, you'll notice the atomic mass is rarely a whole number. So the reason behind this is because isotopes can be uh, atoms of the same element, but they have different amount of neutrons. So when you have different amount of neutrons, you get sort of like an average uh, mass, right? That makes it a little heavier. Sometimes they call uh, some of these isotopes heavy. Like I'll show you hydrogen in a minute. And, the, and one of these hydrogens will be referred to as heavy hydrogen, okay? So um, the atomic mass is this average mass of all the isotopes of that element. That's why you don't get a whole number. You get like a decimal. So uh, we can define an isotope as uh, the isotope of an element is uh, an element of an atom that has the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons than all other forms of that element. I'll show you the simplest example of hydrogen here in a second, okay? Uh, but just keep in mind where our protons give us the identity of the element, but elements can have a different number of neutrons. And both of these are in the nucleus. So uh, hydrogen, the most common isotope has one proton, no neutrons, but there are other isotopes. Uh, two of them would be uh, hydrogen two and uh, hydrogen three. Hydrogen two is uh, deuterium, and um, that has a mass of two. It has one proton and one neutron. Uh, hydrogen three is tritium, and um, that has a mass of three. So with hydrogen three or tritium, you get one proton and two neutrons. Let's see what these would look like in a Bohr diagram. Okay, we've got our nucleus in the middle and our electron shell orbiting on the outside here. The one positive proton in the middle, there are no neutrons in our nucleus, but one negative electron orbiting about. In hydrogen two, you're going to have same amount of electrons, same amount of protons, but you're gonna add one neutron there. So that nucleus is more massive. And uh, tritium has an even more massive nucleus because it has two neutrons, one proton, one electron. So all of these are hydrogen. They share the same amount of protons. They have that identity, but they are isotopes. And iso meaning same or similar. Topes uh, should be place or position. Uh, so basically let's remember protons give the identity. Okay, so same element, but different amounts of neutrons. So the nucleus is gonna be different. So let's uh, think about this. How are isotopes of the same element similar? Well, you should be able to answer that they have the same number of protons, same atomic numbers, same number of electrons. Now, how are isotopes different though? Well, different atomic masses and different number of neutrons. So that's the main idea behind isotopes. Uh, atomic excitement could be part of the reason for this. So when we are drawing our diagram, our Bohr diagram with the uh, electron shells for an atom, the electrons are placed in the lower shells until those shells get filled up, right? Your first shell, you are allowed to put two electrons in. And your second shell, you can have eight electrons and then 18 in the third shell and, and so on and so forth. They follow that, that quote unquote, that rule, that pattern. Um, this is their normal state or ground state. This is when they are the most quote unquote stable. Think of grounded as you're based in reality, you're down to earth, okay? You are, uh, you know, head on your shoulders there. But when an atom gets to be excited or in an excited state, 
that's because it ab absorbed energy and an electron uh, would have had more energy and it would have moved. We studied energy levels last year and quanta, right? They're uh, mathematical predictions of where electrons would be. And just like the, the rungs on a ladder, you can have your feet on one rung, but not in between, right? So the electrons had these places where they were uh, predicted predicted to appear, or, and we can call them energy levels, and we can draw them as shells, okay? So the atom can return to its ground state from being excited when it gets rid of that energy. And how it does that is it's going to emit a packet of light, a photon energy, as the electron moves back down to the lower shell. So when the atoms are excited, the electrons can move a higher level. And when they get grounded, they emit energy and they go down to a lower level, the electrons do. So let's, let's draw a few examples of these uh, excited versions. Um, deuterium here, hydrogen two. Here's what we should notice. We've got our shells and the lower energy shells closest to the nucleus. Now this is hydrogen two, deuterium. You're gonna have an extra neutron. So you have one neutron and one proton and you only get one electron. So this is sometimes called heavy hydrogen. Uh, and when it forms uh, water molecules with this isotope, we call it heavy water. And we'll probably return to that when we talk about like nuclear power, but uh, just, Keep in mind, it's got a bigger nucleus. This electron though, however, it's excited. It has absorbed energy, it has jumped. It is not where we expect it to be. How would this look in a different isotope? Please observe carbon 14. Okay, carbon 14 has six protons, six electrons, and it has eight neutrons, okay? This electron here in the outermost shell is in an excited state. We should expect to see two. And then uh, these four outer electrons should be able to all fit in the second shell. But since, it, since it's excited or it absorbed energy, it jumped a level. Now, here's an isotope with a lot more electrons. This is chlorine, but you follow the same pattern where you can look at where the electrons should be in their respective shells. And if you'll notice one is out of place, it's because again, it's excited. So that's what that would look like. I wanted to highlight that difference between, you know, in a model version, what would an excited isotope look like? Now there's some uses of these radioactive or radioisotopes. And certain of them are not stable and that can be dangerous to you. And they can spontaneously emit radiation to change their nuclear structure. And you probably want to stay away from those. Like uh, tritium is radioactive, but um, deuterium is not, for example. So uh, there's gonna be good and bad with this. There's gonna be you know, pluses and minuses like anything. This radiation is harmful if safety measures are not in place. Um, I'm sure you guys have been to the dentist or the doctor. You had x-ray taken. Uh, they put a lead vest and then they leave the room. Uh, they don't want to be exposed too much to it. Uh, even pilots uh, that fly very often and flight attendants receive more radiation than uh, the average person does because they're higher up in the atmosphere and closer to the ionizing radiation from the sun and space. So we have to uh, respect radiation, but the way society, science, and technology intersect, uh, we can have a lot of benefits from radioisotopes. I mean, I can think of uh, medical treatments like cancer treatments, for example, that, can, that has helped a lot of people. So I'm just gonna quickly list off here in this table, some of these examples. Uh, radioactive isotopes are used in smoke detectors, uh, 
tracers for agriculture like phosphorus in plants. Uh, cobalt irradiates the food, gives it a longer shelf life. It also can sterilize uh, medical equipment. Uh, if you've taken history, biology, any number of courses probably talk about carbon dating, archaeological dating. Carbon dating is pretty cool because the carbon decays at the same rate. So you can figure out how old an object is. Um, uh, medical imaging, diagnosis, med a lot of medical treatments and uh, cesium sterilizing insects. That would be pest insects. Uh, it's more applicable for industrial uses uh, than the home. But our general public opinion of radioisotopes is uh, pretty negative. We focus on the dangers. We don't realize how many lives have been saved. Uh, I'd like you to take a minute to think about how a radioisotope could have been used to keep you safe. And we'll have uh, time to discuss that in person. I'm gonna quickly cover radioactive decay now. First, what is radioactive decay? Let's define it as the process by which the nucleus of an unstable atom spontaneously disintegrates. It releases energy and it releases matter. So uh, we learned the law of conservation of mass uh, in chemistry. And you, you know, if you lose or, you know, gain uh, subatomic particles, you know, your, your masses should be the same at the beginning and the end of uh, any uh, process that these elements, isotopes or atoms go through. And, and that's all true, but um, where you might see a change in mass, a radioactive decay uh, is accounted by the fact that energy was released. So let me repeat that energy can be released and that can account for missing mass. So the first documented uh, observation and I'll show you a picture of that was 1896, uh, Burquell noticed uh, that uranium uh, left an image on film and there is his original image. It shouldn't have been there. And when it showed up, he realized there must be something, you know, causing this. So radioactive decay, it happens naturally or humans can induce it artificially. In either case, the nucleus decays. Radiation or energy as emitted in the form of particles, photons, or both. So uh, think of radioactive particles uh, and think of photons as like a particle or a packet of light. The nucleus uh, before it's decayed is gonna be called the parent. The nucleus after is called the daughter. Sorry guys. Uh, I guess they can only have daughters, but it's an easy way to remember. Before decay, we call the nucleus the parent, and after decay, we call it the daughter. And this might be our last slide here as I talk about the three types of radioactive decay in brief. There's alpha and beta and gamma. There we go. Some of my uh, notation didn't show up. Uh, so in alpha particles, oops, uh, you have helium nuclei. In beta particles, electrons or a positively charged particle with a mass equal to that of electron and gamma rays, which are high energy photons. Uh, also famous for the Incredible Hulk. And I might have to stop it here so we can go more in depth in the, in the three types later.